Hello. Our last video considered the impact of the Great Fire of London. The monument, built between 1671 and 1677, was commissioned to commemorate the event itself and the reconstruction effort that followed. The site, at the junction of what is now Monument Street and Fish Hill, is where St Margaret's, the first church lost in the fire, stood. Afterwards, the parish of St Margaret's was amalgamated with that of St Magnus. The monument is 202 feet tall, exactly the distance that it stands east of the baker's shop where the calamitous fire began. A gilded cherub, known as the Golden or the Fat Boy, in a niche at the corner of Cock Lane and Giltspur Street, rescued when the Fortune of War pub on the site was demolished in 1910, is supposedly where the fire stopped. In fact, it spread a little beyond. A preacher at the time suggested the golden boy represented the sin of gluttony, for which the fire was a divine retribution. If it had been for lewdness, he said, the fire would have started not in a baker's shop, but in Drury Lane. If it was for blasphemy, it would have begun in Billingsgate. And if it was punishment for not telling the truth, it would have started in Westminster. The monument was designed by Christopher Wren in collaboration with Robert Hooke, who site managed the project. It's built of Portland stone. Architecturally, the fluted shaft is a Doric-inspired column, although it's not classically proportioned. Wren and Hooke's intention was to create a memorial that would double as a precisely calibrated scientific instrument. The 300 and 45 black marble steps of the spiral staircase are exactly six inches high. Niches at different levels provided places where operations such as recording atmospheric pressure could be carried out or accurate bearings taken and with a purchase from which pendulums could be swung or a plumb line dropped. An upper platform provided an observatory the gilt bronze flaming urn at the top was hinged and it could be tilted to reveal a view of the sky. Using a lens from a small laboratory in the basement, looking up through the centre of the spiral staircase, turned the structure into a giant zenith telescope for astronomical observations. Scientifically, the monument's usefulness proved limited. It swayed slightly in the wind which made stellar measurements difficult. In any case, Wren was already engaged in building the much more advanced Royal Observatory at Greenwich. Four dragons at the base of the column are by sculptor and architect Edward Pierce, designer of the Bishop's Palace at Lichfield, among other buildings. Three sides of the pedestal have inscriptions by Dr Gale, Master of St Paul's School. They record the damage caused by the Great Fire, Details of the restoration of the Stuart dynasty, with a very fulsome tribute to King Charles II, together with information on the monument and the names of mayors of London. On the west face is an allegorical sculpture by Danish-born Keyes Gabriel Sibber, described at the time as the most elaborate piece of sculpture produced in England since the Middle Ages. King Charles is shown holding a baton of command, standing beside his brother James, the Duke of York, who carries a laurel wreath. Both are dressed as Roman emperors. The Rome of Augustus and the emperors after the Republic, offering a pertinent parallel with England after Cromwell and the Commonwealth. Behind them are figures symbolising justice, holding a sword and fortitude. Beneath their feet, a figure breathing fire represents the flames that engulf the city, now under control with the arrival of Charles and James. In attendance are science, holding a figure of many-breasted nature, architecture with a plan in hand, and liberty waving her cap in the air. Together they console the seated female figure representing the City of London shown propped in the arms of time, with a dragon beneath them holding the city's coat of arms. 
a figure points with a scepter to the sky, where the goddess of peace, wielding a palm branch, and the goddess of plenty, bearing an overflowing cornucopia, look down benignly. In the background, workmen are actively engaged on the reconstruction of the city. I'll take a closer look at a key part of that reconstruction next time, the building of St Paul's Cathedral. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.